Good morning, everyone. It is great to see all of you and to see all these, well, I'm not going to call you spooks, but I think maybe you will be tonight, right? <laughs> we have two princesses over there. Yes, it's a great day. So as I welcome you this morning, I would also like you to know that this is our first day for being able to sing at Morgan's Point. So we'll have to keep our masks on, but indeed feel free to sing the hymns as we worship our God today. So let us take time now as uh, we just settle into our, our seats and allow with me to draw us into that place of a spirit and time and peace in which we can worship our God. Holy One, we thank you for this beautiful autumn day. Even though it's, it's a bit wet, we have the wonder, the glory of your colors all around us. We have the excitement of a Halloween for the children tonight. We have the joy of being together as faith family here worshiping you as we gather our hearts together we pray for your wisdom your discernment your understanding as we listen for your word to each one of us and as we sing our praises to you we pray all of this in the name of jesus christ who teaches us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Just keep sending them in to me. It's a joy to be able to share what God is doing in our lives. And this one comes from uh, Mary, or from, uh, no, this one comes from Ruth. So thank you, Ruth. She writes, I was so thankful to Pastor Laura and Marilyn for the message last Sunday our 181st anniversary of Morgan's Point United Church. This country church has been my church for 86 years. I was baptized, confirmed, and married in this church. Our wedding was almost 68 years ago. The reception was held in the basement as the hall wasn't built until a few years later. Our four children were all baptized, confirmed, and three of them were married here. Listening to all the activities that have taken place over the years and involved so many hard-working, devoted people, I feel privileged that Ron and I were able to do our part right here beside these great folks. We have been blessed with so many great church friends over the years. I thank God for this church, for Pastor Laura, and all of the wonderful pastors who have guided us over the years and a special thanks to all for the prayers and support for Ron and myself during this difficult time. God bless and thanks for the memories. So thank you so much, Ruth. This um, uh, God is Good Time is from Maryland. I am thankful to God that this year we have had at least six months of great weather. Here it is, the end of October, and not even a frost 
to kill the remaining flowers. I have several roses still blooming on three different rose bushes. With a lot of rain over these months, the trees and shrubs outdid themselves in growth, and my back deck was completely surrounded with growth. I was able to sit out there and be completely secluded, almost as if I was in the middle of a forest. Of course, that also meant the grass needed cutting once or twice a week when I was used to having at least July off from that job. Uh, but with everything staying so green, who can complain? Again this summer, we were not able to meet in person with family and friends to the same extent, and I missed the summer parties. But last Saturday, my whole family was able to meet at my sister's home in Hamilton for Thanksgiving. <laughs> a Thanksgiving meal together, and a great time of fun and fellowship. I am thankful to God that my whole family have stayed well and that we now are heading back to a normal situation. God is good! And all the time, Amen. Those are wonderful, wonderful praise reports. Thank you so much, Ruth, and thank you, Marilyn. All right. It's the young at heart time right now. And by golly, what day is it today? Halloween, I thought I might have to pull it out of you. Of course, it's Halloween tonight. And are you getting dressed up? Oh, and you're going out with your grandma and papa, your mom and dad? Oh, it will be so much fun. Well, you know what? When I was thinking of Halloween today, I thought, there are rules we have to follow at Halloween. Just like God gives us rules in the Bible. God gives us Ten Commandments. And uh, those are just like rules. And, and we follow them in order to love God and to take care of one another. And so tonight, when you're out Halloweening and this afternoon, some of the rules I know you're going to follow is you're going to stick close to your mom or dad or grand or grandpa, right? Yeah, you're going to stick close. And when you cross the street, what are you going to do? Yeah. Yeah, you're going to yeah, look both ways, right? And if you're really little like Carson, well, you need to take a hand, right? And be able to take your the parents hand and, and walk across the street like that. And what do you do when you get the, to the door? When, you, when you, the people open the door and you say, trick or treat, what's the other word you say? Please and thank you, you're totally correct. Because that is being kind to one another and showing one another, we care about them, just like they care about you and are giving you all those goodies. So you have a wonderful Halloween tonight, and keep safe and have lots of fun, okay? Let's have a prayer, and Young at Hearts, would you join with the children and I? Loving God, we thank you for activities that are fun for us to engage in. We thank you for the kindness of people that make these times like Halloween fun. 
Keep us safe. Keep us warm. And bring us home happy. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our first reading, scripture reading today, comes from the, uh, the book of Psalms, and it is Psalm 146. I'm reading from the New Revised Standard. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God all of my life long. Do not put your trust in princes, in mortals, in whom there is no help. When their breath departs, they return to the earth. On that very day, their plans perish. Happy are those whose help is in the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry, the Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the stranger. He upholds the orphan and the widow. But the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. Let us take time now for a quiet musical reflection. <laughs>
Our Gospel lesson comes from the Gospel of Mark. I'm reading from chapter 12, verses 28 to 34. And again I'm reading from the New Revised Standard. One of the scribes came near and heard the Sadducees disputing with one another and seeing that Jesus answered them well, he asked him, which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, the first is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Then the scribe said to Jesus, you were right. Teacher, you have truly said that he is one, and besides him there is no other, and to love him with all the heart, and with all the understanding, and with all the strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself, this is much more important than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. After that, no one dared to ask Jesus any question. May God bless these readings to our understanding and to God's name be all honor and glory this day and forever. Amen. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. These Jesus said, are the two commandments on which everything else hinge. 
They are two sides of the same coin. You cannot truly have one without the other. This is about more than our feelings or affection for God and one another. It is about our commitment to the life and well-being of the other people around us. It is a choice we make every day to love or not to love. I wonder what that love looks like. I wonder what your life and my life would be like if we had these two commandments as the guiding principles for all that we do. I wonder what we might create and achieve if we embodied and lived these commandments. Here is another way of looking at what I am saying. What kind of world do you want to live in? What kind of world do you want for your children, grandchildren, and those who will come after you. What are your best wishes and hopes for the future of the world, our country, this town, our church? What do you pray for when you look at everything that is happening today. Here are some of the things I want, wish, and pray for. I want a world, a healed and healthy world that is founded on human dignity and respect for one another. I want a world in which people and how we care for one another come to principles and policies, support people and, and this good earth we live on rather than agendas. I want justice for all. And not just those who can afford it, who have power, or who have the right skin color. I want a world in which different religions can gather and engage in conversation and be respectful of one another. I want a world in which difference and diversity are celebrated rather than oppressed. A world in which people and nations are at peace with themselves and one another. I want a world in which we face and learn from our past mistakes and failures so that we can do and be better. I want a world in which everyone has a living wage employment, educational opportunities, access to health care, safe and decent housing, enough to eat, and sustainable farming practices. I want a world 
in which the needs, concerns, sorrows, hopes, dreams, and lives of others matter as much as our own. Do you, do you want those same things too? Is that the kind of world you want to live in and pass on to the next generation? What else would you add to the list? Ultimately, this list points to a world in which we love God and our neighbor as ourselves. Now, even as we say that is what we want, well, is it really? Do we really believe that these are the two commandments on which everything else is bound together as one. Are these two commandments what really orient the direction of our hearts and determine the things to which we give our time, money, and energy? I know I want to say yes to these questions, but I'm just not sure anymore. After all, I feel like at times I am part of the problem. I look at what continues to happen around our country today, and I'm not sure we fully believe or live those two commandments. If we did, would our world be different? For example, why do we continually separate indigenous children from their parents, placing them in temporary foster care outside of their culture and seldom reunite them as one family unit again? Or when did wearing of our COVID face masks become more of a political statement rather than simply an act of love for the well-being of our neighbor? Or why during this time of the pandemic do we seem more energized by playing, name-calling, finger-pointing, than working together for a solution. Well, we are quick to claim that we are one of the greatest democracies in the world. And yet, this fall, during our federal election, there was increased anger, name-calling, and hatred directed towards some of our federal candidates and political parties. So where was the listening, tolerance, and willingness to learn? And finally, how did I get to be the age I am today? And I'm just now learning the history of systemic racism against the indigenous people in our country and its current manifestations. Love God. 
Jesus said. Yes, but what is it that I love when I say I love God? Have you ever thought about that? I cannot help but wonder if individual rights and self-interest and traditions have displaced God as our first love. If God was our first love, wouldn't God's concerns, dreams, and hopes for the world be ours too? A wise person once told me, we love others best when we love God first and most. Love your neighbor, Jesus said. Yes, it is a value I claim to hold in my life. It is something that I teach and preach most Sundays. And yet I recognize that I do not know all the names of the people who live beside me in my living community of Albright Gardens. And if I do not even know their names, how can I possibly know their hurts, their hopes, or needs? What about you? How are you loving your neighbor? When I look at my wish list and listen to my prayers for the world, I have to ask myself, what am I doing to bring that world into existence? What are you doing? It is not enough to only want, wish, and pray for that world. Love is a verb. It is an action word. I am afraid at times these two great commandments have become like <coughs> the old favorite song. The tune has been so overplayed that it no longer calls us to the dance floor. The words are so familiar that we no longer hear them. We've lost our passion for the music. We still like the song, but we are no longer singing it. And if we are, it is only for the God who comforts, affirms, and comes through for us and only for the neighbors who happen to look, act, think, worship, and vote like us. I do not know what that is, but that is not love. The love Jesus speaks about is all or nothing. We love God first or not at all. We love everyone, everyone or no one. I have heard it said the only measure of love is love without measure. <coughs> what if you ask someone, do you love me? And after a long and awkward pause and considerable deliberation, he or she said, 
Well, up to a certain point, under certain conditions, to a certain extent, yes, I do. You have your answer. And it is not what you wanted to hear. We all know, we all know that is not love. The mark of really loving someone or something is unconditionality and accept, engagement and commitment, fire and passion. Where is that today in your life, my life, and the life of our faith community, town, and country? Who is the recipient of that love? And who is not? And what would it take for you and I to expand this circle of our loving? Do we want to do that? I struggled with today's gospel lesson and this sermon. It would have been so much easier and certainly less risky to preach a sentimental, feel good, ain't love great kind of sermon. But, but, that would have been a betrayal of Jesus, of you, and myself. So you got what you got today. I would not be a bit surprised if you were asking, oh, so Pastor Laura, what is the hope? Where is the hope in this sermon? You're supposed to give us hope. And you would be right to ask that question and make that statement. I asked myself that very same question. And here is my answer. You are and I am. You and I are the hope that runs throughout this sermon. You and I are the hope for the next generation. You and I are the hope of our faith community, our town, and our country. You and I are love's only hope in this world. So let us go out these doors today, out into the world as God's loving presence of hope, comfort, peace, well-being in every circumstance and towards every individual we encounter. This is God's word for us this day. All thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, We stand before you today aware that the word love just does roll off our lips sometimes and we don't, do not take into account the enormity of what it means to love you and to love our neighbor. But we do want to love you and our neighbor just as we love ourselves. And so we come 
before you, knowing that you can cleanse and fill us to overflowing with this wise, gentle, peaceful love that you bring to each one of us. May we be touched by it and may we in turn reach out into our families, into our place of worship, into our community, into our world with this message, with this life of hope and love and well-being for all. We thank you for that, God. And we pray today as always for the leaders of our lands. May they be guided always by your peace, by your honesty, by your love, by your calling that we live in dignity and well-being with one another. May sorrows be comforted. May homes be built. May healing be felt. Thank you for this, God. And we thank you as well for our medical professional, professionals who have worked so hard for us during this pandemic. May they truly meet your blessing and comfort. And may they find times of relaxation and care among their friends and family. We thank you, God, and we now lift up to you prayers from the silence of our hearts. Let us now pray in silence. We thank you, God, for hearing and responding to these, our prayers. In Jesus' name, amen.